G'day and welcome back to another tutorial on surviving Mars. At this one we are looking at the physics uh, research tree. So um, we're going to go through each one by one and just sort of go through and sort of maybe give some tips and tricks on those as well. So um, let's get straight into it. Okay, here we go. Now just remember before we start, the research tree itself is randomised. So the order that I will present here is the order that I have for this game. But when you start the game yourself, even though the research will be the same, um, the text themselves may be, in a, or will be, in a different order to what I'm showing here. Or maybe, you may be lucky enough to get exactly the same randomization. Um, but let's start from the beginning. Uh, the sensor tower. So the sensor tower requires no more power or maintenance. And it's a nice one. I got an early game on, so you don't. You can just park it anywhere, and it will let you know where the uh, the meteorites are, are gonna gonna hit. Um, extractor amplifiers, uh, amplification. Extractor amplifier amplifies increases production by twenty five percent, but also increases power consumption by ten. Um, so just make sure you've got enough power. Um, early game, this one may hurt a little bit. But certainly late game, once you start building your fusion, um, I, I don't think you would have a problem with your um, uh, your uh, your, um, your your power output. You sort of late game. You once you start building your your fusion, nuclear fusion, um, power does not seem to be a problem for my bases. Um, certainly late game, water maybe, but power no. Um, low G turbines, wind turbines and polymer blades, production is increased by 30%, so 33%. So this is a nice one because it doesn't actually have any effects, oh, sorry, any um, uh, defects to it. So it's not, it doesn't uh, increase more maintenance or anything like that. It just increases your power production by 33%. Um, probes are cheaper and can deep scan. So don't confuse this one with your deep scanning, uh, which are two different traits. So this one, really, you only need to spend the um, research points on this one if you're going to buy some more probes. Now, personally, I buy my probes at the beginning, and then I just go with the um, surveying. And I and I haven't in the past bought more probes, um, but maybe that's something that uh, you would do um, if you actually need to to search or scan the, the planet a little bit quicker than what, it, what it's done. Uh, subsurface heating. Now, I did not pick a location in this case that has cold waves, um, but if you do, then obviously the subsurface heater is gonna be an important device uh, just to make sure that your bases and everything around your bases uh, have the appropriate uh, heat. Uh, your Sterling Generators. So your Sterling Generators I find are probably a good mid-game unit um, before you move on to nuclear fusion. So it's also about where um, you get this into the tree. Now obviously you can get your fabricated generators to start off with from, from Earth. Um, and these these are nice, but once again I think, and we'll just, let's go have a look at our Sterling Generators. I know we should have some on, um, our bases, probably this base. Hello, little stir. Ah, here it is. Um, polymers. So I find that once I've built polymer factories, like here, and my polymers are going crazy, once I'm positive in my polymer production, then the sterling generators uh, are quite useful. And what where I am here is I'm hurting for metals. So as you can see, I'm hurting, um, my metals consumption is quite high compared to my production. Um, so in this case here, I potentially will start reducing the amount of solar panel I have. So this is in late game. Reduce the amount of solar panels, which a solar panel produces, well as you've got here, an hourly production of 10, um, and an hourly production of 10. but in this case here, and that's closed. If I open it, I now have an hourly production of 20, 
but you will need to maintain it more often. So I just want to find a balance between reducing some of my solar panels so I can reduce the burden on my metal utilization and increase uh, my polymers. My polymers are also creating jobs um, to, um, to maybe move to sterling generators. Uh, moving along. The atomic accumulator, new building. The atomic accumulator stores electrical power, has a huge capacity, but charges slowly. So, um, I do like them. I usually have one on every base, but you're gonna prove me wrong on this base. No, nope, here it is. Um, so, it stores 3,000. It's stored 3,000, so it's at full capacity and the maximum output is 100. So once again, it's not just going to exert it, it will only um, release it at uh, 100 per tick, uh, 100 per hour, but it is actually full. Um, having a few of those on our major hub uh, means that I'm storing at stored powers. I've got 16,500. Um, and as you can see, my power demand and production is extremely high. Um, and I'll show you how we're able to maintain and, and get those powers a little bit later on. Uh, but I do find these handy and I do find that you can certainly reduce, I mean you start off with your, um, have I here? I don't even think I've got them. You start off with obviously your, um, your battery, uh, the ones that you start off at the beginning of the game, but very quickly you can just move into these. Um, but these are certainly handy. Uh, for uh, for early game charging, but they would soon be uh, replaced. These requires polymer for servicing. Uh, these require two, um, but you just look at the capacity difference. 300 requiring one polymer, uh, 3000 requiring two polymers. So you can see that uh, you potentially want to you know, shut these down at a, some stage and uh, try and just balance out or, or get a little bit of maintenance. I think what happens is you build and build and build and then sometimes you need to just go back to your entire colony um, and just do a little bit of maintenance to get rid of some of the maybe redundant items that you built early game. As I said, solar power, where you would build a huge solar farm to start off with, maybe you can reduce that to reduce the burden on your, um, uh, on your metals with your power accumulators, maybe you can reduce some of these power accumulators um, once you've got your uh, atomic accumulator just to reduce the burdens on your polymers to maximize your, uh, your, uh, your polymers more efficiently. Next thing, uh, the factory uh, amplification. Factory upgrades amplifies increase production by 25%, but it also increases power consumption by 20%. Late game, as I said, you've seen, I've got plenty of power, um, so getting that extra 25% uh, is great. Uh, we did talk about it in the last one as well, so we can, uh, can't remember what it was. Factory AI also increases your performance by 20% in robotics without uh, the impact um, that we have here of, of cost. So having these two gives you, you know, nearly, let's say, 45% increase uh, on your production. Solar panels are gradually cleaned from dust when closed, uh, resulting in less frequent maintenance. So that is a nice one. It does reduce the burden on your metals. Um, so getting that early in your tech tree is super handy. Deep scanning, so sectors can now be scanned again for deep deposit. So you wanna hope you get this early so you don't have to do too much deep scanning. Now I was unfortunate to get this sort of mid to, you know, sort of mid in the research tree, which meant that I basically had to rescan half the planet again. Um, not a huge burden. Uh, after 200 souls, the planet is completely scanned. Um, but if you get it early on, it means that you just do it once and then you can forget about it. Meteor defense system, a nifty one. And I've got to admit, I never really appreciated the meteor defense system until probably late game, medium to late game, when I had 
a huge amount of bases. And what I mean by that is I've now in this particular game, one, two, three, four, plus two megas, uh, five, six. Because I'm in the map, I'm always probably getting meteor storms now every probably 30 minutes game time. Um, when you have your lasers, that's what I've just had here, when you have a couple of lasers covering your base, so you can see here I've got one laser here and one laser here, you don't worry about it. But when the meteor storms come in, to start off with on my small bases, I went, ah, oh, it's okay, I'll just go repair it. They can be painful. They can do damage that you then focus so much time and energy just trying to bring everything back online. So they're a good insurance policy. A good insurance policy. Uh, what do we got here? Next one. Nuclear fusion. Okay, so I got this one early. I trained it early, but you really... You really can't start using this building until you're starting to build um, your third stage of domes. Um, I think anything short of building a mega dome, um, you just you don't have the people. Uh, if I go with this one here, um, it takes a maximum of, I think 24 people that you can throw in here. Um, engineers, I don't have any engineers, but you get the production. So it's, it's getting about 100 people. I think this is a great end game uh, device, two reasons. Uh, one, it produces a massive amount of power um, and really helps with your supply and demand uh, issues. The second one is it creates jobs. And where I'm stuck at the moment in this game is um, truly it's uh, employment. Um, I have been able to get on top of it, but employment, I'm breeding so quickly in the late game is I cannot keep up with um, finding jobs for people and, and also making houses uh, to make sure people are, are homeless. Um, so even now, I'm probably going to have to start thinking about creating another dome um, just to start moving people uh, to that dome as well. Uh, so this is a great one. So it's a great one, as I said, not only for producing the power, but definitely also for creating jobs because it's an outer dome structure. Um, so if I was you know, potentially overstocked with people, I could just produce another one of these because you get a lot of the upgrades and research, which is about AI um, and robotics. So things such as your farms, it's reduced the amount of people. Service industry, there's another research that means all your service industry buildings no longer need uh, humans um, or no longer need citizens to, to do them. Uh, so um, that's a good one to sort of create out of dome jobs and therefore in dome you can actually put more accommodation. Okay, jumping along. Uh, the don't even know Tribo, Tribo electric scrubbing. I haven't done it, but I think it would actually be great, um, mainly just because I had other priorities in the research. Um, in order to uh, to actually reduce, obviously, the dust that's on the equipment as well, reduce the maintenance, um, and therefore uh, help with your uh, your metal. So I definitely will put that in the in the queue, and we'll look at that for uh, the next one. Deep water extraction. Definitely a, uh, a positive one and I was hanging to get this one. I was, it's a shame it was so late in the game um, But with this one and the next one which is deep metal extraction as you can see um, It definitely helped me um, I'd already done the scanning early on um, So I could see all my deep uh, deep wells my deep water wells and my deep minerals. I just couldn't get to them Next one we have is research amplification. Obviously a good one as it increases your, uh, your science um, and your nodes by 25%. I haven't researched it yet. It's just literally because of the priorities I was doing on the researching. Um, fusion uh, auto-regulation. Your fusion regulator upgrade reduces the amount of workers. Now I haven't done this one yet because I'm actually using my fusion regulators to employ people. Um, I'm not saying that I won't do it later, uh, but at the moment I need to create jobs and it's one of the ways that I can create jobs. Um, maybe later on if I do get uh, short 
on jobs, uh, sorry, if I, I don't have enough employees, um, then I may actually sort of do that re research. The problem is, is once you've researched it, I don't think you can turn it on and off. It actually just uh, reduces the amount of workers you require in your fusion regulator. Then the last two things we have are wonders. So the first one we've got is microfusion, uh, a wonder which creates an artificial sun, uh, uses a lot of polymers, uh, produces a colossal amount of power. Um, it provides light uh, for nearby solar panels during the dark hours and heats the surrounding area, uh, consumes a fast amount of water on startup. I haven't researched this one. A um, couple of things that make me nervous is the water consumption. I am struggling a little bit on water in this game. Um, and obviously it uh, produces more, um, more power and it also produces the, the sun to keep the, uh, the solar panels going 24 hours a day. So they are sort of nice, but I do not have a power problem at the moment. Um, the next one, which is the Amiga telescope, the interplanetary uh, astronomy gives access to new breakthrough technology and boost overall research. So I definitely will do this one. A massive amount of electronics, 300 electronics, but I think that is the only way I'm gonna be able to see the last five breakthroughs as part of this game. So I'm looking forward to re researching this one and I'm looking for, forward to increasing my research technology, but also to see what these last five breakthroughs are because once I've done that, then I can create a video on the breakthrough tree. So thank you very much, guys. Um, I hope you found that uh, helpful. Don't forget to hit the likes, leave the comments if you'd like to see more on Surviving Mars or anything uh, else, or if you'd like any more detail on any of these uh, researchers themselves. Don't forget to hit the subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you in more of Surviving Mars or another, uh, another game. Good luck, have fun and good luck whilst you're building your colony on Mars. Okay, see you later, bye.